Hello everyone and welcome to video lecture uh, module 2. Uh, we will be covering uh, chapter 24 in this lecture, uh, geometric optics. Uh, the previous chapter, chapter 23, uh, we covered uh, electromagnetic waves and then uh, we uh, covered a little bit uh, about the nature of light. We talked about uh, the law of reflection and uh, the law of refraction. Uh, in this chapter, mainly we're going to be covering uh, mirrors and lenses. Okay, it's kind of an easy chapter. I hope it's going to be easy for all of you. It's not very complicated, so I'm going to go over it uh, quickly. So, uh, and I will do some problems, uh, examples, and uh, problems from the from the homework. Uh, so let's get down to it. So. Uh, when we talk about lenses, mirrors and lenses, let me talk about mirrors. We, here we mean um, concave lenses or convex lenses. A conve concave lens looks something like that, uh, where the shiny part is here, okay? This is not shiny here, it's just a rough part. So this is the shiny part right here. Uh, and then a convex, uh, I'm sorry, did I say concave lens? This is a mirror, so this is a concave mirror. And then a convex mirror where the rough side is here, but this is the shiny side. This is where you see things. Okay, so that's a convex mirror. Okay, and uh, the reason we call them concave and convex because of their shape, but they also they are another name for them. We call them spherical mirrors. The reason we call them spherical mirrors is because Take, for example, convex mirror. Convex mirror originally was, think of it like a sphere, a ball, okay, where the, the shiny part is outside. You got that? And then I have here uh, the radius of that sphere. Let's call it R for now, big R. So imagine I would slice it and cut this piece right there, okay? And I would take this piece right here. Whoop, I can't even do it. There we go. And if I take that piece right there, here it is, and... So that would be the shiny side on this side, the rough side here, which is the inside, right? And then I will have the, oops, uh, the, the, the radius right there, the R, okay? So we call it spherical mirror because it was cut from a sphere, okay? Same thing is happening with a concave mirror. I have a, a, a sphere, but the shiny side, think of it like it's inside, you know, a spherical shell, that is. Not, and the rough side is outside, okay? And then if I would slice it, let's say I would cut it like that, say like this, and then I would take this part right here, and of course I will see that shiny side on this side, the left side of it, and then of course that's the radius right there, is the radius here, <clears throat> right? You got that? That's basically the reason why we call it uh, spherical mirrors, okay? So every concave mirror, whether it's convex or concave, it has a radius, okay? This is important. We call it the radius of curvature, or the radius of the sphere. Okay, fine. Let me delete all of that. Oops. There we go. Okay. Um, so every, so if I take one of those mirrors, let's, let's concentrate on a concave mirror. Again, the shiny side is this side here. And I'm, I'm going to imagine a line that passes through it like this, straight line, not like my line here. And where this point, oh, this line is called the optical axis. And this point right here, we call that the vertex, okay? Uh, now, if I would shine beams of light that are parallel to the mirror like that, okay? Again, these are all parallel. I excuse my... Uh, uh, my lines here, what will happen if you have all these parallel rays coming on the mirror like that, what will happen, all of them are going to reflect on a point, okay, such that this point is, if this radius is here, let's say, let's assume this is the radius right there, okay, so this is the radius, you know, that's the center, rather, we call it the center, and that's the radius right here, right? They all get to reflect at some uh, at a point exactly half between the center to the vertex, okay? So like that, they're gonna go this way. I'm gonna try to make my best to make them as straight as possible, like that, okay? 
So they're going to reflect this way. At this point, at this point, we call it big F, the focal point. Okay. And this distance, the length between the vertex to the F right there, this length is small letter F. We call it the focal length, focal length, okay? F. And of course, C is the center of the mirror of that sphere, the one we cut from. And of course, from the vertex to the center again, this is the radius, right? So this is the radius. So how is F and R are related? F is half of R. Got that? Make sure that you box that. Make sure you remember it. Okay. Um, that's one thing. Another thing, if I have, let me lift it up a little bit. <clears throat> Let's say I have a mirror. And here is the optical axis. Maybe I need a ruler to do that. Do I have a ruler here? I'll try my best. I don't have a ruler. There we go. It's working all right. Okay. And so this is the focal point right there. And this is the center right here, right? And let's assume that I have an object standing in front of the mirror. Again, well, this object is a vertical object right there, okay? So the location of this object to the vertex, we call it the object distance. And in our book, we call it S. Okay, in some books they call it P. But anyway, okay, at this point we can call it O if you want. But anyway, that's just too much detail. Okay, so the question is, how does the object look like when the, uh, how does, I'm sorry, how does the image of this object look like in the mirror? Well, here is how you do it. What you need to do is you, you know, there's a lot of light uh, coming, uh, you know, reflecting from the object to the mirror. All we need is two rays. And the best rays to pick are the following two. And remember this statement. Parallel focal, focal parallel. See, if I have a ray that is parallel to it, I'll try to my best to make it parallel right there. And if you remember from the previous uh, page down here, let me go back. Remember, if it's parallel right there, it's going to reflect to the focal, right? So parallel focal, okay? So what's going to happen? My hand is not working very well. There we go. So what's going to happen? This ray that is parallel is going to reflect through the focal point like that, and it's just going to go, going to go whatever, okay? So that's parallel focal. The second one, if there is a ray that actually passes through the focal point, I'll try my best to go through that. Here it is right there. Sorry about that. And it's going to go to the mirror, and it's going to reflect parallel like that. And look what happens. It's going to... Uh, reflect and both of those rays, the reflected ray, are going to meet here and what you will see, the object is going to be formed there. Uh, the image, excuse me, the image of the object will be formed there. Okay, so we this is the object distance, S. This will be the image distance, S prime, our book calls it. Okay, and they are related to each other. Remember the, remember the, um, the distance between the focal to the vertex? We call that small letter F, right? And that is this formula, 1 over S plus 1 over S prime equals 1 over F. Another very, very important. This is the central equation of this chapter, really, is this. Okay? So this equation basically links how image distance, object distance, and the focal length are related. Okay? Got that so far? Okay. Uh, well, more examples later, but for now, let me just build up those ideas here. Well, maybe maybe I'll, I'll give you an example right now. Let me uh, just to make sure that you understand what I'm doing. What I'm doing here. Okay. So let's say I have a spherical mirror. Again, when we say spherical mirror, we mean concave or convex mirror. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention something. Let me let me go back very quickly. So this is a uh, oh I think I deleted it. L let me let me just digress a little bit before I do this example. 
this is important to keep in mind and that is the following if i have a concave mirror okay it is a concave mirror here's the shiny side so the radius is right here that's the radius right if i have a convex mirror and and i am putting remember the object is somewhere here and here is and this is a convex mirror and the object is here well but uh, as you can see the radius is here right it's on the other side okay so for this well, there is a sign convention if you read that the focal is equal to a number and this number is positive that means the mirror is concave okay for that this applies to this okay for a convex however because the radius is on the other side the the focal is negative less than zero so that's convex you got that so this is important to keep in mind when you're reading a problem uh, like this the example that i'm just saying the example says we have a spherical mirror of focal length let me just go to the example now and show you what that means it says here i have a spherical mirror with focal length f equals 10 centimeter period that's it stop right there okay that's what it says now the question is is it concave or convex well since f is positive you know 10 not negative 10 then it's a concave mirror concave mirror you got that this one this kind of mirror okay all right good so this is one sign convention there is a there is a, a number of sign conventions this is one of them okay so he says find uh find s prime at the following the three parts here at the following location a uh when when s is equal to 25 centimeter b when s equal to 10 centimeters and c when s equal to five centimeters okay we're going to do them all one by one uh, how are we going to do it we're going to be looking at this equation right here okay so let me, let me write it down again i want to show you a little trick on how to play with this equation so i have one over s plus one over s prime or equal one over f and remember we are solving for s prime right so i'm going to do the algebra and solve for s prime before i work on this problem so one over s prime is equal to one over f minus one over s so one over s prime is equal to f s s minus f correct if i do the uh, uh you know uh, common denominator thing so therefore s prime is really f times s over s minus f that's the formula this is kind of a neat little formula that will uh, help you calculate the s prime quickly rather than using those reciprocals instead of saying so that's the formula we're going to be using so let's start with part a he says f is equal to 10 centimeters and it's positive so i know that it's his concave right and he said um for part a oh i already wrote in part a so he said that s is equal to 25 right so s is equal to 25 centimeters so what is s prime well let's see plug it in so i'm going to get 10 times 25 over 25 minus uh, 10 and when i calculate that i will get i'm going to use my calculator you can uh, work with me by uh, guys so it's going to be uh, 250 divided by 15 and so 16.67 let's just make it 16.7 okay and it is a positive number okay so the positive number means that the image is formed on the same side okay in other words if i do this ray diagram thing here is my object at 25 centimeters right my object is at 25 centimeters okay and i want to so the image here is 16.7 so it's going to be formed somewhere here okay we'll come back to it whether we got to know we need to find out whether it is upright or inverted you see what i'm saying this is something that we're going to find out in a minute but it's going to be somewhere here it says 16.7 
versus it's not 16.7 here. You said on the other side. If it's on the other side, you're going to get a negative answer. Okay? If you get a positive side, image formed on the same side as S. Okay? That's the meaning of it. So, this is a, there is a sign convention here. So, now we have two sign conventions. If the focal is positive, it's concave. Negative, convex. If S prime is positive, the image is formed on the same side. If it's negative, it's on the other side. Get that? All right. Moving on. Now, also, he's asking for what is the magnification? In other words, how big is the image? Is it smaller, magnified, or reduced? Okay? And the way we do it, you say magnification, is this is the formula, minus S prime over S. So we have minus 16.7. Again, that's just a formula. Okay? You need the formula that you need to be familiar with. Uh, so minus 16.7 divided by 25 and when we calculate that <coughs> you'll end up with negative uh, 0.667 okay which is basically 66.7 with a minus there I forgot uh, percent what does that mean is that uh, okay so is this larger or less than one if it's one it's the same size if it's more than one it's larger so this one is reduced make sense how big is it? It's only 66, 66.7% of the original size, okay? So that's mean because, so if it is, so M, if it is greater than 1, it's magnified. If M is less than 1, it's reduced, you know, opposite of magnified. One more thing, if M is positive and if M is negative, okay? So if it is here, or in our case, M is negative. You see what I'm saying? If it's negative, it means it's inverted. It's upside down. Okay? If it's positive, it's upright. Or the old name for it, erect. Okay? If it's upright. Uh, if it's positive, it's upright. If it is negative, it is inverted, upside down. Okay? So let me go back to the drawing here. So here is the object. Okay? So now the object, let me let me erase that thing just one second. Oh, it's not working. I'll do it again. Oh, with that, sorry, hold on. Let me let me just erase this thing. Ah. Okay. Let me go back to the line. Okay. So let's assume that the image is here, right? Sixteen point seven. So it, it says, according to my calculation here, it is reduced to smaller. Let's say this is the 1. So it is smaller by only uh, 66.7, and it is inverted. So it's smaller in size, and it is upside down. You got that? That's basically what's going on. Okay, good. All right. Uh, now let's do part B. Part B says, what if it is 10 centimeters? All right, so here we have S equals 10 centimeters. Let me lift the page a little bit more. Okay, so S is equal to 10 centimeters. We know that F is also 10 centimeters. So go back to that formula, S prime, the one I just developed. Again, you can write it uh, uh, in your notebook to keep it handy. It's right there, right here, right? Fs over S minus F. Fs over S minus F. Uh, I want to make sure that it right. Yes. Okay. So we plug it in. So we get 10 times 10 over 10 minus 10. Ha. Huh. So 100 over 0. Well, what is that? Well, that's kind of a infinite or undefined. Right? What that means is that if I would put, here is my, uh, my concave mirror, okay? Here is the focal point right here, right? This is the focal length, 10 centimeters, right? If I put the object right there, I'm not going to see it. Why? No image is formed. Get that? No image is formed. That's the meaning of it. It's undefined. You understand that? 
So if it's no image form, then there is no magnification, no reduction, invert, whatever, none of that. Okay, so that's it. Okay, C. Now C says, in the last part of the problem, he says, uh, you have here uh, S equals 5 centimeters. Let's do that. So S equals, uh, sorry, this is, uh, yeah, S equals 5 centimeters. In other words, if I have, here is my mirror. Here is the focal, let's assume the focal point is right here, which makes it the center point is right there, right, the radius. And now we got to put it right there, somewhere here, okay? Uh, five centimeters, I'm sorry, it's going to be middle of the way here, somewhere in the middle. But anyway, okay, so what is S prime? Well, S prime, according to the formula F, S over S minus F, <clears throat> so that's going to be uh, 10 times 5 over uh, 5 minus 10, is that right? And then I'm going to get 50, <coughs> excuse me, over uh, negative 5, right? So therefore, S prime is equal to negative 10 centimeter, okay? So what's the meaning of that? Well, remember, we said that if it is, let me go back here to the part A, we said that if it is positive, image is formed on the same side. If it's negative, it's formed on the other side here. Here, let me show you what that means. Let me make a drawing. I just don't have enough space here. Let me make a drawing right there, right here. So here is the here is the concave mirror, okay? And here is the optical axis. Here is the focal point. Here is the radius, uh, the center right here. And let's assume that the image, the object is right there, okay? And let's use the rule that I told you. Parallel, focal, focal, parallel. Parallel, focal, focal, parallel. Well, there is no focal here, right? In front of it. There is no focal. The focal is behind it, okay? Here is a third image that comes in to the rescue or comes in very handy. If you throw a, a ray right on the vertex, the vertex point will act like a plane mirror. The angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection like that. And what's going to happen? Look at what will happen. What will happen? The ray is going to diverge. Look at that. They will never meet. Okay. However, if you extend them backwards like that, they meet right here. And then you're going to see a big giant image of this thing that is upright or erect, if you will and it is magnified but it's on the other side you see that okay it's on the other side now what does that mean well let's let's continue on so let me calculate the magnification let's say you don't even know this picture but the magnification minus s prime over s so that's going to be minus uh, we said s prime is negative 10 so that's minus minus 10 over s which is uh, 5 that makes it 10 over 5 and that's 2 magnification so this is double the size okay you get that so this is double uh there's no need to write anything okay that's the double the size of that got it that's one thing uh and it's positive what's the meaning of positive well let's go back we said that if it is negative what is it uh, here it is if it's positive it is erect it's upright okay and if it's negative, it's inverted. Well, obviously, from the drawing, it's, uh, well, it, it, from the from the equation, it tells us it is upright. And if it's greater than one, it's magnified. We're getting all of that, actually. Okay? So, it is upright. And it is magnified. Magnified by, twi by, uh, by two. You know, twice the, the height, if you will, right? Also... I forgot to mention also, now, if it is on the same side, let me go back to that thing. We said that it's on the same side if it's positive. We call that, in this case, we call it a real image. Okay, if it's on the same side. If it is on the other side, we call it a virtual image. So, since this is, uh, here we can say image is formed on the other side and we call that virtual image 
okay? Everybody got that? So virtual image means behind the mirror. Okay, good. We'll, we'll do a couple of more examples, I promise. But let me move on with this. Uh, I'm looking at my notes here for something different. Uh, here's a... Uh, let's look at this one. It says... Oh, sorry. Uh, it says here... Here's an example for my notes. It says a woman... Uh, stands with her face uh, 40 centimeter from a cosmetic cosmetic mirror. Okay, so, uh, is the mirror cosmetic mirror for uh, ladies' makeup mirror? Are they are they concave or convex? I'm not sure really. We'll find out. Okay, so what happens, it says erect image is twice as tall as her face. Okay, so it's getting a magnified image of her face. Question. What is the focal length of the mirror. Okay? So how do we do something like that? Well, let's see. We start with um, the magnification. We know that the magnification is minus S prime over S. Um, he gives us 40 centimeter. That's her face. That makes it what? That's the object distance, S, correct? He didn't give us the image distance, but he gives us the magnification. So from all of that, I can find S prime. So it, we said that uh, it is, uh, the image is twice as tall. Okay, so she's getting double the, the size of her face, equal to minus S prime over 40 centimeters. Therefore, S prime is negative 80 centimeter. There we go. Okay. Now, because it is upright, and it, well, f first of all, because it's negative, what does that mean? That means the image that she is seeing is virtual. Remember we said that virtual on the other side of the mirror? Because it's negative, right? Okay, so it's a virtual image. So now, I can find, from this information, I can find the focal length. How? Well, 1 over S plus 1 over S prime equals 1 over F. So let's just plug it in. That's 1 over 40 plus S prime is 1 over negative 80 equals 1 over F. We can do the algebra here. 1 over 40 minus, uh, what is that? Um, sorry, let, let me do it this way. Uh, 2 over 80 minus 1 over 80 equals 1 over f, correct? It's basic algebra. And that will give me what? Um, 1 over 80 equals 1 over f. So therefore, f is equal to 80. Positive or negative? That's positive centimeter. What does that mean? That means the image, excuse me, the mirror is concave mirror. Right? Remember we said if it's uh, positive, it's concave? So it's a concave mirror. It's not convex. It's a concave mirror, and the focal length is that. Got it? Interesting problem. All right. Uh, now we move on to lenses. That's basically what I wanted to talk about in terms of mirrors. Lenses is kind of the same stuff. We actually use the same equation. The only difference between them is that uh, you can, uh, it's, um, well, here is what's, okay, let, let me go back to the mirror. So we said that here is an, a concave mirror, for example, right? And I have an, uh, a ray going this way, and it's going to reflect this way, and so on, right? A lens, on the other hand, ah, it's not a good one. Let me, uh, there we go. 
how do I draw a lens? It is uh, like this. Uh, and what's the difference between a lens and a mirror? I'm sorry, this, li this line should go in the middle of it. But the difference is that when light ray hits the lens, it doesn't reflect off, it actually penetrates it. Okay, so parallel, it's going to be the parallel focal focal, but it actually goes and penetrates it. Okay, so any light ray coming into the lens, it goes on the other side. You get that? There is no reflection because it's not a, it's not a mirror. That's what makes it different from a, from a mirror. The mirror, light reflect off the mirror. That's the nature of the mirror. Where lenses, the light actually penetrates it and it is formed or converges on the other side. You get that? Okay. Now, for a lens, however, what makes it a little different, let me draw it again. What makes it different is this. So I have a lens here. Here it is. Okay. And here is the optical axis. Okay. Uh, the lens, you can think of it like it has two focal points. One here is a focal point, and exactly the same distance as another one here. Okay. So you have two focal points. And then you can put the object whichever you want. You can put it, uh, you know, at a distance less than f or a distance above, uh, uh, larger than f, whatever. Okay. But remember, you have two focal points here. And here's how it works. It's you remember that we talked about the lens. It said uh, if you have a ray that is parallel, it's going to go through the focal, and if it is go through the focal, it's going to reflect off parallel. And uh, remember the, the the three rays. Here we have similar. If I have an object here again, if I have an object right there. Uh, so parallel focal, but no reflection. It's going to go through this focal, and then focal parallel. So if I have a ray going through this focal. It's going to go parallel, and they're going to meet here, and the image is going to be formed there. See that? Okay. There is a third ray that comes in, and that is if you have a ray going through the vertex, which is right there, it will actually go through it undeflected. And, of course, if you do that, it will should go through there, right there at this point as well. You see what I'm saying? So those are the three rays. Let me review the mirror. For the mirror... Uh, here is the focal. Parallel focal, let's say the object is here, or focal parallel, and then the other one, what the third one? If it goes through the vertex, it reflect off at the same angle, so they both, all of these rays meet here, okay? You don't need three of them, you only need two, but you, you can pick any two you want, okay? Same thing with a, with a lens, Parallel focal, but remember, you have to penetrate the lens to go to the next focal, not to the same focal. See here, this is the same focal. So parallel focal, focal parallel, and then if it's go through the vertex, it just goes in a straight line. You can draw with a ruler, straight line, and it should go through that same point that every the, both both two rays have gone through. You got that? Okay. All right. Uh, so. Let's do a problem that is similar to the previous problem that we've done, but now it's for mirrors. Uh, I have a concave mirror, a concave lens. I forgot to mention about concave lens. Hold on, I'll do it. I have a concave length of focal length of 10 centimeters. Uh, find S prime at the following three distances. A is S equal 30 centimeter, S equal 10 centimeter, and S equals 5 centimeter. Okay, before I move on, okay, we have this kind of lens, which is the lenses, the most common lenses that you find in uh, microscope, your cameras, even your eye is a, con uh, is a conversion lens, uh, telescopes, uh, just about every optical instrument out there these are all concave lenses because the reason they're called concave or converging lenses is because i'm sorry they're called convex lenses but they are converging lenses because when a light ray comes on them uh here is the optical axis they converge the light into a single point which is the focal point okay so they call that a converging converging lens 
Okay. Then you get the diverging layer, which looks something like that. They're not very common, but they're there. And these, basically, when light goes in like that, parallel rays like that, what they will do, they will reflect off in such a way, though, if you extend those lines that are reflecting, that are diverging like that, they'll actually meet at the focal point on this side. You see what I'm saying? And that's called a diverging lens. And just like a uh, converging lens, the focal point, the, excuse me, the focal length here, this focal length, is positive. For a diverging lens, the focal is negative. Okay, this is how you know if you're dealing with a diverging lens or a converging lens. Another name for them, because this one looks convex and this one like, so we call it convex, convex. This one, uh, concave, concave. You see what I'm saying? Because if you imagine your eye is here looking at it, it looks like it's concave. Now your eye is here, you're looking at it this way, it looks on concave. So you say concave, concave lens, which is diverging. And then uh, if your eye is here, it looks like convex in front of you. And your, if it's your eye is here, then it looks also convex. So we say convex, convex lens. And this one is concave, concave. Or the better name for them, a converging lens which is the most common lens for most optical instruments that we deal with. And then you have a diverging lens. You got that? Okay. So let's go back and I'll show you the sign convention for a combi. Uh, so even if he doesn't say concave lens, just the fact that F is a positive, I know it's a concave lens. You got that? Okay. So part A, he wants S prime. Remember S prime is equal to what? F S over S minus F, correct? Here we go. Let me show it to you. Uh, somewhere down here, up here, there it is right there, All right, S minus F, so let's go back to the end. So all we need is just to plug it in, so I have 10, S is equal to 30, divided by uh, 30 minus uh, F is 10, so that will be uh, uh, 300 <coughs> divided by 20, so S prime in this case is equal to 15 centimeter. As you can see, it's positive, right? So that's greater than zero. That makes it a real image, okay? Not virtual. Remember, virtual is negative, okay? And real means it is formed. Remember for the mirror on the same side? No, for the lens, it's formed on the other side. That's what makes it different from a, from a, from a mirror, okay? So for a reel to form, it has to form on the other side. You got that? Okay. Okay, good. Next, um, oh, let's calculate the magnification of this thing. So magnification is minus S prime over S. So that's minus 15. Remember, this minus sign is natural. It's part of the formula. So don't put it. It's rare over uh, 30, so that's negative one half, right? So what does that mean? Well, it's reduced. So this lens will cause the object to reduce in size because it is less than one, right? Remember, magnification is less than one, reduced, right? And greater than one is magnified. For our case, it's reduced, right? Okay, another thing, it's minus. So if M is negative, which, which is the case right here, see the negative sign? This makes it inverted. It's upside down. You got it? It is upside down, okay? Let me show you a picture of it. Here is the lens. I'll try to make it. There we go. Here is F right here, 10, this F, 10 centimeters. And it says it is 30 centimeters, let's say somewhere here, let's say, for example. So here is, here is the object, okay? This is S right here. So parallel, oh, sorry. So this is another focal right there, right? So parallel, focal, like that, right? And then focal parallel, focal, parallel. And that's the image right there. As you can see, it is indeed upside down, inverted, and it is shorter, reduced. 
See that? And it's on the other side, which makes it positive. Got it? So I can actually prove it geometrically. Okay, good. Um, now let's do part B. Part B, he said, let's go back. Um, 10 centimeters right there. Okay. So 10 centimeters. So here we have uh, S, S prime is... Um, Again, we go back to the formula, right there, the same formula that we used, okay? So we have Fs over S minus F, so that will be, um, I'm sorry, what's the S prime? I forgot it already. S prime is, um, I'm sorry, we are looking for, S is 10, sorry, so we have 10 minus 10, uh, this is, this is time, I'm sorry, this is, 10 times 10 over 10 minus 10. That's what I want to say. So 100 over 0. Of course, that's undefined. Just like we did with the previous problem, which means what? Image is not formed. In other words, you're not going to see any image. Okay? It's just going to be a blur if you do it to an actual lens, a magnifying glass or something. Okay? So image here is not formed. Or maybe you can say images formed at infinity. Okay. Uh, okay, good. And then part C, here we have S equals 5 centimeters. Again, we have the equation S prime is Fs over S minus F. So that's going to be 10 times 5 over 5 minus 10. <clears throat> and that would be equal to 50 over minus 5, and that's give me neg negative 10 centimeters. Okay, what does that mean? Well, negative, okay? So that means it is virtual. So it's less than 0, that makes it virtual. All right? That's the third, first thing. Let's get the magnification. Minus S prime over S. Don't forget that minus sign. That's going to be minus minus 10 over... 5, and that makes it positive 2. Aha. Uh -huh. It's greater than 1, makes it magnified. Right? And, <clears throat> and it is positive, it makes it what? Upright. Got it? Let me draw it for you. Let me show it to you. So here is the lens. And let's assume, so we have the focal is right here, the focal point, it's the same distance right there, okay? And here I have it right there. Let's say I have the, oh, it's five, so it is right there. I'm supposed to make it vertical. There we go, here's the vertical one. Sorry about that, it doesn't look, but uh, let, me, let me clean it up a little bit. try my best. There it is. Okay. So, let's apply the rule. Focal, excuse me, parallel, focal. Gonna go like that. And then, focal, parallel. Well, you can go backwards. So, you can't do that. Okay, I can do parallel, focal, but I can't do focal, parallel, because that's going backward. I have to, the rays have to go toward the lens, right? So I resort to the third ray. Remember the third ray? What is the third ray? The third ray is going to go through the vertex right there, right? So I'm going to draw the line here. And what's going to happen is going to go straight line like that. And look at those rays are diverging. Okay? However, if I extend them backward like this, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, you're going to get that ray, the, excuse me, the, the image formed right there behind it. And it is, as you can see, it's magnified and it's upright. So this is S prime and this is S. You see that? Okay. So if I go back to what I have gotten, look at that. So I'm starting with five centimeters right there. The S prime is actually negative 10, double the distance. Okay, there it is. And it is magnified twice as big. There we go. This is twice as big. 
and it is upright. There we go. And that makes it virtual image. Okay? This is basically the idea of a magnifying glass. Remember the magnifying glass? You have a magnifying glass, and you're looking at a bug. Here's a bug. And when you, if you, uh, if your magnifying glass is far away, you're not going to see the bug magnified. But when you get really close to the bug, it, it blows up. You actually see a big magnified bug. What happened? Basically, what you're looking at is the virtual image of the bug. Okay? You're not going to see the bug upside down. You see what I'm saying? But what you, what happened is that you put the magnifying glass at a distance that is smaller than the focal length of the magnifying glass within here okay so if the magnifying the the focal length of the magnifying glass of the lens is 10 now you put it at let's say seven eight for the, our case here you get it five and what happened when you put it at five the bug size is actually double and it is upright which means you can see it you're not, it's not you're not seeing it upside down or anything like that you see what i'm saying that's what's cool about this okay good um that's let me look at the book this is basically what i wanted to talk about and that's really the uh, the subject that we're covering you can skip pretty much everything else in this uh chapter uh let me look it up maybe i can do uh let me look at the homework sorry about that we've been talking for 46 that's fine uh, let me look at, maybe I'll do a couple of homework, or one or two. Let me just see if there is any one that is. Uh... You guys are welcome to, you know, post something on, uh, uh, ask the professor, and then uh, tell me if I wanted, if you want me to do a, a particular problem for you. Um, I have number 10. It says I have a little note on it. Say do, do it in class, that is. Let me do number 10. That's uh, in the homework. I, I mean, it's in the book from the book let's let's do number 10 and i have let me go to the book and i will just do this one and uh, we'll call it a day for this lecture uh, we are oh we are already there uh this is chapter uh, 24. <clears throat> i want to go to the problems summary click it here see what happens and problem number 10. problems oh, okay number one number two oh it's right there okay it's right here the problem how do i magnify this thing i can't if i was using a mac i can magnify it i'm not very good with uh, working with pcs anyway it says here examining is that the one i'm looking at my yeah it says examining your image in a convex mirror okay we have a convex mirror remember what convex mirror is uh, the uh, the focal length is negative Imagine uh, examining your image in a convex mirror whose radius of curvature is 25 centimeter. You stand with the tip of your nose one centimeter from the surface of the mirror. A. Where is the image of your nose located? B. Your ear is 10 centimeters behind the tip of your nose. Where is the image of your ear located and what is its magnification? Do your answers suggest reasons for your strange appearance in the convex mirror? All right, let's see. Let's see how we do this one. Shouldn't be difficult. Uh, problem. Okay. Um, let me shift it more. I just want to make sure there is a certain uh, area where the video screen will disappear from your view. I think this is, I'm reaching the limit here. I can't go anymore. And then I can move it. Yeah, I think this one is okay. I'm, I am within the area. Right there. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's really, uh, should I lift it up? Can I go lift it up? No, I can't do that. No, this is this. Okay. All right. Um, I'm still learning how to use the stylus pen. 
the learning curve is not terribly easy, at least for me. Okay, it says examining the image of a convex. So we have a convex mirror. Immediately what comes to my mind, F is negative. I want to write this down just to keep my, to, uh, uh, you know, to remember it so I won't make a mistake. Uh, of radius, so the radius here is 25 centimeter. So I want to get immediately before I even continue, I want to get the, the focal. Focal is R over 2. So that's 25 over 2. And that makes it uh, 12.5, but that's wrong. You got to put a minus that there. You got that? You got to put that minus because it is convex. If you don't put it, you're going to get a wrong answer, convex. Okay? All right, good. So I have F equals negative 12.5 centimeters. All right, um, 10. Then you stand uh, with the tip of your nose is 10 centimeters from the surface of the mirror. That would be, that would make it the, un, the, the object distance. So the tip of your nose is the object distance. You're looking at the tip of your nose. So that will be 10 centimeter. All right. Now he said, where is the image of your nose located? Well, okay. So we know that S prime is equal to SF over S minus F, correct? So we can just calculate that. So SF S is 10 times F is negative 12.5. Don't forget that minus sign. Divided by S is 10 minus minus 12.5. You see that? So S prime is equal to uh, negative 125 divided by, uh, what is that? 22.5. I use my calculator for that. So that will be 125 divided by 22.5. Answer. I will get uh, S prime to be negative 5.56. There we go. Okay, so S prime is equal to 5.56 centimeter with a minus, sorry. Okay, what's the meaning of the minus sign now? What's the meaning? Of, remember, this is a convex mirror, so that means the virtual image. All right, so on the other side, you got that for a mirror, okay? All right, that's good. Uh, and then we want to find the magnification is minus S prime over S. So that's going to be minus minus 5.56 centimeter divided by uh, S is uh, 10. And that will give me positive 0.556 centimeter. So what does that mean? That means it is less than one, that makes it reduced, right? And it is positive, what does that mean? It is upright, right? And there we go, simple. Okay, now let's do, this is part A. Part B, he says, um, your ear is 10 centimeters behind the tip of your nose. Where is the image of the ear located? All right, so let me let me make a drawing of that thing. So I think I can draw a profile. It is your nose. Let me make you smile. Hey, that's pretty cool. Here's your ear. Pretty. There we go. Nice. Nice. All right. Here is the mirror. And it says it is 10 centimeters from the tip of your nose. And then your ear is 10 centimeters from the, from the tip of your nose as well. Okay. So I, I, I hate to destroy beautiful art, but there we go. Let's just put it here. There we go. Okay. So it's a total of 20, correct? So in this case, uh, this is the convex mirror. Uh, the con Yes. So anyway, so in this case, S is, will be 20 centimeters, all right? And so in this case, when I calculate S prime, which is this formula right there, guys, right? So that's going to be, let me just put in the numbers. Let me lift it up a little bit. And when I calculate all of that, it's going to be, uh, what? 
uh, it is SF, that's going to be uh, 20 times 10 over 20 minus 10. So that's S prime is equal to uh, 200. Uh, let me just put it down. 200 divided by 10, this will be 20, correct? Uh, did I make a mistake? Looks like I, I don't like the answer. Uh, SF, F is what? It's 20. And F is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, F is not, uh, I forgot, F is 12.5, uh, sorry about that. Sorry, let me, let me eliminate that. Let's do it again. So we have S prime is SF over S minus F, sorry about that. So it's going to be 20 times negative 12.5 divided by 20 minus minus 12.5. You agree with me on that? So that's going to be, let me do it again. So we have 20 times 12.5. Answer. So we have here 250 with a minus divided by, uh, I can do it on my head, right? 32.5. So this divided by 32.5. Answer. And we will get a negative 7.7 .7 centimeter. There we go. So what is that? Again, it is uh, negative, so that makes it virtual. And let me get the magnification. So that's minus S prime over S. <coughs> so it's going to be minus minus 7.7 .7 over S is 20. And so 7 points, oops, I keep making mistakes. 7.7. .7 divided by 20, answer, 0.385, which is basically a positive 38.5% or 0.385% uh, which is less than one, that makes it what? Reduced, right? And it is greater than zero, which makes it upright. And that's it, is that right? Okay, any questions, please let me know, and you can post them at Ask the Professor. I think I'm going to end my lecture right here, and uh, have a great week. Bye-bye.